Joining us right now is former St. Louis Fed President Jim Bullard. He's now Dean of Purdue University's uh, uh, Mitchell E. Daniels Junior School of Business. We appreciate you being with us this morning. Uh, just I'll, just your, your immediate reaction to these numbers, Jim. Yeah, this was a strong report and uh, unemployment ticking down. Uh, it looks like uh, the economy is running pretty hot. Uh, so I think um, that's good news, I think, for the economy. I do think that the policy rate is um, too high right now for the current situation because uh, inflation has come down some 200 basis points from where it was last year. If you look core PCE inflation, which is the Fed's favorite measure, you know, it was 200 basis points higher last year at this time. So I think um, you somehow have to have a moment where the Fed can take that on board, the fact that inflation has come down, but you need your moment. Uh, and January didn't provide it with the hot uh, inflation report. February didn't really provide it. This report isn't really providing that moment. But uh, I do think that the Fed... Uh, you know, needs to get down uh, a little bit lower uh, based on the data that we have on inflation. And, um, you know, we could talk more about it, but that's that's what I think the basic situation. OK, is. so but just play it out for the rest of the year. When is that moment come? And at the moment, is there is there going to be three opportunities to create that moment? Yeah. So I think that the inflation reports that are upcoming, uh, if they can show some disinflation, uh, the continuation of the disinflation trend that we had, especially in the second half of last year, uh, that will give the committee comfort to make this first move. And I, I do think there's the notion that the first move is more momentous than any subsequent moves because you're kind of setting a direction, and so they want to be careful about exactly what moment they would uh, they would choose. So, but if things are uh, as strong as uh, they are, why, why do you think? I mean, look, there's a lot of I can I can give you reasons why they you'd want to lower given just what it's going to mean to interest rates in this country and what it's going to cost this country to service our debt and everything else. But you could also just argue maybe do nothing. I mean, this has been the, the argument that a whole bunch of folks have made and also the folks like Jamie Dimon, who basically said that inflation is going to be stubbornly high. But by the way, Steve Cohen well, said certainly, it too today. Certainly, I, I think that the idea, you know, what's the rush? My former colleague, uh, uh, Chris Waller, uh, that was the title of his speech at one point, what's the rush? And certainly with the economy performing pretty well, there probably isn't uh, as much of uh, urgency uh, to get a to get a lower policy rate. But still, uh, they're too high by by most metrics. If you think the policy rate was at the right level last uh, July when they made their last rate increase, why do you think that level is still the right level today? And and core PC inflation is 200 basis points lower. You know, you got to take that on board and bring and bring the policy rate down. But but there are other considerations because it's the first policy move, and you don't want to move on news where inflation is moving in the wrong direction. Or you know, so uh, I think that's the the trade off here right now. Okay, but as you know, we are in an election year, and there has always been a view that as you get closer to the election, uh, that there might be some hesitation about making any moves. Frankly. Yeah, I think you can make uh, 25 basis point moves uh, or anything that's, you know, rationalized by the data that as it's coming in. Um, I don't think that uh, 25 basis points one way or the other move, changes uh, election outcomes. The median voter isn't watching this program, I don't think. So I, I, I don't think you can win an election based on whether the Fed zigs or zags, unless they did something extraordinary, but uh, ordinary monetary policy would not affect the election. And I don't think yeah. that the committee really takes uh, election into account right. because of that. When you look at these numbers, though, how would you grade our economy today? We were talking about this piece that Greg Ipp had written yesterday uh, in the Wall Street Journal about how strong the, the data, the numbers would suggest our economy is, and yet uh, how disconnected it appears the polls uh, about people's feelings about the economy seem to be. Yeah, I read that piece, and I, I have my own response to this. I think uh, a chart I saw, anyway, I'm going to probably get the numbers a little bit wrong, but uh, average hourly earnings have come up over the last couple of years, about 13%, but inflation or the price level over the last couple of years come up 18%. So a typical worker is looking at that and they're saying, hey, I'm down 5% over the last couple of years. They don't like that. That's real income down for them. 
uh, unless they have some other source of income somewhere else, uh, you know, they're worse off and they're reporting that dutifully saying in surveys, I think I'm worse off and I don't like it. So how would you grade our economy then? Uh, on traditional measures like growth, uh, it's really great to see the good growth. It's, it's great to see these jobs uh, coming back. I would mention one thing about jobs uh, for viewers here is that uh, non-farm payrolls haven't really returned to the trend line that you would have drawn from before the pandemic. So maybe it's not that surprising that you're still adding uh, quite a few workers here uh, if you think the pandemic was this you know, very large but ultimately temporary disturbance. Uh, you, know, you should be able to get back to that trend line. That hasn't happened yet. So uh, it's great to see the jobs being added. It's great to see the growth. I think there is uh, plenty of innovation uh, going on in the economy. Um, so from the traditional macro measures, yeah. I, I do think it's a good economy. But but that this inflation has hurt, especially right. low and moderate income households, uh, harder than the uh, rest of the income distribution. Right. So, and but now, that's now that you're an academic, about. we got Purdue University behind you here. I want a grade. I need a grade, not on a curve. Uh, it's a B plus. B plus. Okay, we'll take it.